like John Davis is three. You suck! If you make things out of clay and made by the bay, I just made. There is old Mr. Three Wiggle, isn't it? Take drugs, Danny. Every day. Good. Still go. All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome to For the Game Podcast, episode eight, brought to you by the guys at Golf Dudes with insight into and input from the PFP Tour and all things golf. Uh, my name is Jeff Lewis. With us, as always, we have Mark Bonus. What's up, Mark? You know, I'm here. I'm here. You're here. We're all in different locations today, okay? Yep. You're, we have swapped uh, Central and PST times. You are now in California. I kicked it on over to Louisiana, and uh, it's raining. It's pouring outside, and uh, thunder is frightening me as I haven't heard it in like, you know, a year and a half, two years. Yeah, so. and storms don't mess around when you're over there. <laughs> they don't, and we, and we don't get those out where you are currently. Right. Um, and also with us today, Brandon Fletcher, as always, back from his, if you've been following us, my boy was hurting over the past few weeks, okay? He had a rough one. He's back with us now. How you doing, B? What's happening? Dude, kidney stones are no joke, and I am fucking fired <laughs> up to be here. I'm so happy to talk golf and be here. You go. Bet, Let's better than, go. Better than in the hospital, huh? Woof. Rough stage. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Well, um, as always, want to throw a quick shout out to our sponsors over here at SweetRollsGolf.com and KegSmiths.com. Uh, we have a discount code PFP15. We'll get you 15% off anything on their websites. Uh, tonight, we're going to be running through a few things we missed while we were all away. The Memorial Tournament recap uh, had some interesting and, and stunning events go down there. And also, we're going to talk about the Palmetto Championship, which ended uh, just a few hours ago. And it was a wild finish, a wild ride at the end. Uh, not a whole lot going on the entire weekend. DJ was trying to make a move, never did. But uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy. Uh, but before we dive into that, I'm going to talk to my boy Mark because I know you played today, man. And I want to hear how it went. I want to know what's happening. How'd it go? I, I did play today. So I'll put it. So I recently got fitted for some new irons and uh, That's right. a, new, a new big stick. And uh, I'll put it this way. I, I, uh, I topped my first <laughs> hole number one, first tee shot, first time using the Sim 2, I don't know, a golf course. <laughs> and I topped it. Oh God! And had to take an immediate mulligan uh, right off the first tee. <laughs> that um, way, did, did, did you did you pump up the driver before you hit it? I mean, it's a sim too. Were you talking the game? What? <laughs> so I was. I'm playing with my father in law and some other friends, uh, and so. But so it's a special time when you're playing with your father in law, right? Because you want right. to you want to look like you know you know what you're doing. Like you have your life together, including your golf game. And you're taking care of you know her. You're a good match for her. His daughter and everything. Right. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't mention anything about getting new clubs, right? A, I don't want to talk about the investment necessarily. Good call. Um, the investment. Right. It, you know, <laughs> yeah, we're having, we're literally, we're in California for a baby shower, right? So we're having a baby. It's like, there's probably better things I could spend my money on. Congrats, um, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, so, but the nerves are there, right? Anytime you're playing with your father-in-law, the nerves are what are there. For sure. Um, and yeah, man, I just I topped my first drive, and I you know followed it up with a decent drive after that. And I actually I hit it overall pretty well today, but that was uh, not the way I wanted to introduce my clubs to you know an actual round. I've obviously um, hit them on the range and stuff, but the first round, first drive with it, I top it into the bushes. So you topped into the bushes. Now you bring out your, and then you re tee, hit it into the fairway. You bring yeah, out your yeah. new, you bring out your new irons. How'd that one go? Yeah, and the irons are playing well, man. So here's the thing about that too. It's like, wait, what'd you get? First of all, what what you got? I, I got, got the, the Apex Twenty Ones. Oh, oh really? yeah, the, the the sim the sim two driver, uh, and then the Apex Twenty Ones irons with the with the steel shaft. That's I see. I I thought you went full tailor made. I forgot you went Callaway mm -hmm. on the irons. How you like it? I went in. I went into this fitting session thinking I was going to get the 770s, the P770s, because mm -hmm. I've heard so much great things about them. Brandon, obviously, you just got fitted for those. Uh, you've been talking them up. Um, and, you know, and the reality of it is, I'm not that great. You know, like, those are those are a tough club to hit, right? Yeah. And so when you're getting fitted, I mean, I was trying, uh, you know, they had me going through all these different combinations of shafts and 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 club heads. And honestly, like, the, the um, Callaway uh, Apex 21s were just, they felt the best. They were, I need that extra forgiveness, honestly. You know, I mean, they say they're for a five, what Callaway says is they're for a five to 15 handicap, which obviously is a massive yeah. difference, right? Five to 15. And I pl probably play somewhere more around that, like nine to 10 handicap range. Um, and 
I mean, certainly they're going further, but that's because the loft, you know, they're, they're lofted a little stronger. Um, but the forgiveness is unbelievable. Now, if I had one gripe, it's the workability of them. Um, they're, they, what they say is they're a player's distance iron. So it's not necessarily a, a player's performance iron, like a blade, right? So I was coming right. from blades and I wanted to get something a little bit more forgiving and went with this. Um, but they're great. I mean, I hit them well. Uh, I can't work them as well as I could the other ones, but if you're always hitting it straight, you don't need to work. I mean, you need to work them, but not, I don't, right? I'm not yeah. a pro. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and so, I wait, you, goodness. so you had blades though, and you went, and this, this is more of a cavity back ish. I mean, yeah. kind of, yeah. kind of a hybrid. It's, like a, it's, it's definitely a cavity back. It's, um, it's, uh, but it's not like a, uh, it's not like a, um, performance improvement club. You know gotcha. what I mean? It's not one of those. Yeah. It's not It'd like be that. comparable to a sim too. It, uh, what they are is they're, um, the same as the TaylorMade P790s. Okay. Really? Yeah. So they're the, it's the comparable to the P790s. Hey, did you hit the 790s, man? Did I hit them? Yeah. 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 I tried those out too. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, yeah, I don't know that. I love them, man. They're, they're, they feel great. I mean, they, I think they sound pretty good. The, the only thing I don't like about them immediately is the look. So when you're looking down, especially coming from blades, right? You have the really thin top line. Yeah. Um, you know, th there's no offset. These clubs have a little bit thicker of a top, not like a thick top line, like other clubs, but a little thicker than what I like and a little bit of an offset than what I like. But again, I can't, I can't deny the data that was shown during the, the fitting. Right. Right. Um, and I, and again, I, I played them really well today. I thought, uh, for, for a first time, I'm still getting used to them, but well, well dude, Callaway makes incredible irons. It's that literally I had yeah. uh, Callaway irons my first two sets of irons that I ever first uh, irons I ever learned to play with Callaway's don't remember the, uh, the model. And then after that, just because it was what I learned with, I went with Callaway's again. Uh, I'm playing with Mizuno's now, but it's time, man. I've, I've been playing with the same. And it's a used set. I just picked them up at Roger Dunn and, and I love Mizuno irons. They feel really great. They look really great. Um, but it's time. You guys have both, uh, just, just pulled out a little money from the bank account and threw down on some fittings and some new clothes. And I'm feeling like the man left out <laughs> in, in the whole group. I'm, I'm playing with used Mizunos. I got a driver from uh, from Sean Walsh from the PFP tour. Ended up sending a, sending a driver that, you know, Taylor made sends him a new driver probably every what? Tyler. I mean, Tyler sends him a new driver every what? Month? Two months? I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, six, three to six months. So I'm playing with a used driver, used Mizunos. You guys have sparkling brand new clubs. That's it. You got a you got a new bag. I do have a new bag. Thanks to there you go. Brandon Fletcher actually sent it to me. <laughs> I buy nothing. <laughs> I buy nothing when it comes to golf. Okay. I spend all you my know money what? playing. That's the best way to do it, though. I mean, for the longest time, I bought my clubs from a pro who again title has sent him clubs. He didn't want to use them. So he sold them to me for 200 bucks. A brand new oh. set of blades was the last last clubs I I had. Um, my, my, uh, my driver I got from Roger Dunn that was bought out for a day and then returned. And the guy's like, Hey, this is, this just came in like an hour ago. If you want to buy it, you should buy it right now. Cause it's not going to last. Right. So I mean, my Scotty Cameron was given to me and I still use that. It's freaking great. Dude, I mean, so if you can who get gave you a Scotty Cameron, huh? Who uh, gave you a Scotty Cameron? One of my dad's friends. Yeah. He, <laughs> he like, I don't really like it. If you want it, you can have it. And I was like, can, yeah, can I, I be, it. can I be your dad's friend? friend receiver of that stuff <laughs> yeah i had need a free well brandon actually during the masters his dad who's a huge golf dude uh went to one of his buddies house who we didn't know this at the time but he is actually the golf dude yeah um, that dude needs to be on this show it was I'm unbelievable talking. how much golf shit he had and like masters flags and hats and cups yeah. and everything going on and then he takes brandon back into this back special room and uh how many, Brandon? He probably had 20, 25, 25 Scotty Camps, all new. like a, wow. yeah, brand new. He buys them? He just collects them. He, he collects, collects them. them. Collects Scotty Camerons. Yeah. <laughs> so so Brandon stole three of them, and uh, we're all now going to be getting new yep. Scotty Cameron putters. Yep. So. Nice. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, so how'd you finish? What was the final? What'd you do? Is the front uh, better than the back? Where'd you go? No, I, I mean – yeah, the back was the, so I was two over on the back. Uh, I was ten over on the front. Oh lord! Uh, yeah, so it was a it was a brutal day. It was a it was rough. Again, the back. I mean, the back. I putted for eagle twice. Uh, I went. I I made it with the sim. Uh, got was on the green. I mean, it was a bit of a downhill, but three twenty four. 
Uh, I probably caught the downhill and just went on the green, was putting for Eagle. I missed it, uh, but I tapped in for birdie. And then on number 18, uh, I went driver off the deck first time with the sim. Nice. Uh, two, driver off the deck, got it to the green, and then wow. left my eagle putt about 10 feet short and then uh, missed the birdie putt. So, uh, Dude, that's a move That's a move I the never break. make there on the course. The driver off the deck is something that I want to I, – I want that in my bag. I don't have it in my bag, man. Honestly, you like, it's not pretty. Yeah, I do driver off the deck regular. Like if I'm on a par five and I'm trying to get to the – and I can't with my three wood or something. Yeah. Yeah, driver off the deck is a great way to go. It's not a pretty ball flight for me anyway. It's always low and running. Yeah. But the course we were playing today, I mean, you can run it. So it, it'll, you know, you can roll the ball and it'll run kind of like a, it's not a links course, but it kind of plays like that with the, the way like the fairways roll into the, the greens. Also, I, I chipped like twice today. I was putting from everywhere off the oh, green. Hey, there you go. Taking the tips, yeah. man. Taking the it tips and implementing them. I like it. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was great. I I'm a big fan of putting from off the green. Yeah, I've been uh, saving some strokes myself. But uh, my I'm in Louisiana right now. My grandpa actually he played uh, yesterday, so not today, but he played yesterday, and he came over and we were talking. I haven't seen him since uh, the pandemic, and he shot he he shot under his age yesterday, and he's done it like I don't know like eight to ten times now. And every time he does, it, he gives me a call. He's like, hey, you know, I shot under my age, which. If you think about it, it's a pretty crazy thing to do. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, he's sitting there talking to me and then he left and I started thinking about it. And I was like, you know, the dude's 90 now though. And I had to check him. I called him back and I had to check him. I'm like, grandpa, okay, I'm impressed. But like, you're not even having to break 90 anymore <laughs> to, to, to shoot your own age. So that makes it even more impressive, honestly. <laughs> no, I mean, think does, about man. that, you know, it's That's crazy. Great. He gets out there at 90 and still, I mean, just, you know, like you say, it's pretty much driver off the deck every single swing, low and running. But yeah. he hits it straight and he gets it to the green and it's uh it's buttery and it's nice. So that's all yeah. you need. So congrats to you guys who have played uh in the past week or so. I haven't played in two weeks and I'm just freaking Jones and I'm ready to go. Yeah. What about you, B? You gotten out there or no? I have not, yes. Yeah, I know you've been working, I've been traveling. It's a it's a sad sitch. Well, well, while we were all working and traveling, some things went down on the PGA tour. We missed a podcast last week, didn't get to cover it. Just gonna recap it real quick. The Memorial Tournament at Mirfield, uh, a pretty boring tournament, actually. And if you were watching through the weekend, as a Saturday round went, you saw someone just running away with it, stealing the entire tournament, ahead by six strokes, John Rahm playing their round of his life on the PGA Tour. And uh, we all know how that turned out. Five steps off of the 18th green, a rules official comes to him and tells him, you have tested positive for COVID-19. You, sir, have to withdraw. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, the rules are the rules, right? But you'd think out of all the sports, like golf would be one that would be like, you know what? It's probably fine. Yeah. Well, you know? I, it was a situation where I know I, I did some reading on it. And so he was he was in close contact with someone who tested positive yep. early yep. in the week. And so the the tour went to him and said, look, you know, you're 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 on the list of the close contact list. If you want to play, that's fine. But we're going to test you twice a day. Um, if you test positive, you're going to have to withdraw. And he, or you can just withdraw now, not play and just not take the risk. He said, no, I'm going to take the risk. Let's play. And wouldn't you know it, dude test positive. I mean, I, for me watching live, and if you watch live, you saw he walks off the green, rules official comes, tells him something. And at the time, no one knew anything. And so all we see is this guy play the round of his life, walk off. They're about to end the coverage. And John Rom gets told something and he collapses to his knees. And for about five minutes, I think all of us in the, in the golfing world and Nick Faldo and every, with all the announcers, they all thought the worst. I mean, you think, you mm -hmm. know, family member, you know, something crazy. Um, thank God it was just that he had to withdraw. And he also handled it with like crazy amounts of class. He really sustained it that night and just said, look, guys, it is what it is. And what I thought was the best thing he said was, uh, you know, I'm upset. It, it's devastating that it happened. He said, but I'm going to be watching the tournament tomorrow and I can't wait to see how it finishes. And I was like, yo, that's really awesome to like keep the focus on the tournament, keep the focus on golf, not complain about it. Um, he's an incredible player. He's due for a win. And it's it's sad that it didn't happen for him, but he's going to get one. He's going to get one soon. Yeah, I think he'll be okay. He's in yeah. for the uh, U.S. Open, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. He's he, yeah. He's uh, the PGA Tour cleared him up. So Patrick Cantlay, I, I hate to say it, he won the, the Memorial Tournament in Mirrorfield, but it just kind of got overshadowed. Uh, but today, a few hours ago, I spent the majority of the Sunday watching the final rounds of the Palmetto Championship. And it was another absolute 
heartbreaker on the PGA Tour for one person. There was a first-time winner of the PGA Tour, and that was a dream come true. Um, but if you were watching Jason Hadley, Jason Hadley, uh, he was ahead by three strokes, walking onto the 16th tee, and this dude goes bogey, 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 loses the tournament. We've all been there. Did anyone see? <laughs> We've all done it. Literally, I mean, I'm just sitting there as a, as a, you know, as, as a hacker sitting out there looking. 18th tee, all you got to do is par. You par and you win a PGA event. This dude duck hooks it to the left, blades one to the right, almost puts it in the concession stand. It bounces off the concession back towards the 18th green. All he has to do is chip up and down, and he wins the golf tournament. And this fool pulls out his rescue club. I, I don't hate the move, but in this situation, I don't know, man. I, I'm pulling wedge. He pulls out his rescue club, tries to do the putt thing, and leaves it to about eight feet. Leaks a weak little putt, leaks it to the right, misses it, taps in, loses the tournament. God, three oh, bogeys God. in a row. It's so oh, rare to see any pro golfer do that, right? But especially as you're as you're sitting there about to win a tournament. He, the problem was he's probably thinking about that, right? Like all yeah. I have to do is not hit three bogeys. And then he goes out there with that mental mindset where he's like, don't do three bogeys and then does three bogeys. A hundred percent. Well, right. he was, if you were watching, he had, he stepped up. I mean, I think even Nick Faldo called him on it. Um, so it's 16, he bogeys and his approach shot, he stood over his approach shot for, don't quote me on this. I think it was three hours. I think it was around three hours. He stood over his, his approach shot and shanks it and and i think nick was like wow yep that's a case of standing over the ball too long <laughs> something mm-hmm. like that and then the next hole same thing he's standing over and he didn't even stand over it that long he just kept backing off of it and then he stepped back up to it and then he backed off again and i was watching it with someone and i said a thousand percent this is going to be a shank and sure enough <laughs> shanks yeah. it up we've all been there as uh you know amateurs having a goal and just failing miserably it's rare that you see it on the pga tour like that <laughs> Yeah, I, I hit three bogeys multiple times today, uh, <laughs> yeah. but also I'm not getting paid, you know, millions of dollars to play golf. You, you know, what's something kind of interesting, kind of talking about the mental aspect is I've I've watched a lot of these YouTube videos where they, the players and, and their caddies are mic'd up yeah, and they're talking through shots and they're, you know, figuring out which club and stuff, but they always finish with, all right, see it happen and then hit it or something like that. Yeah. Visualize it and then hit it. Right. Yep. I bet he couldn't visualize anything. A hundred percent. That amount of stress. He's not visualizing anything. All he's thinking about is don't mess up. And yep. And you you can see it. You can see it in his body language. You can see it. Like I said, the way he's standing over the ball. And then uh, it was 18. That shot he hinted at 18 that almost went into the concession. He hits it. And, you know, we all see pros, you know, one hand the club or put it behind them. It, it it was so deflating his reaction after the club left <laughs> after the ball left his club face. He hits it. It was just like his whole body kind of just fucking <laughs> crumbled. And at that moment, I knew it. I mean, you can kind of tell. I mean, as as you feel it yourself on the golf course, when you're trying to hold it together the hardest, that's sometimes when it just it slips and you can't yeah. do anything to fucking help, man. <laughs> and I mean, I've seen Brandon do it at least. Uh, I mean, how many times, B? I mean, how many times have we played you're, recently? You're huh? kidding. <laughs> No, nah, but so it was a rough one. Uh, but we're gonna move on. I mean, we're gonna, like I said, we we're gonna move on with John Rahm, and we're gonna move on with Chase and Hudley and uh, Hadley, and uh, and wish them the best. And hopefully, they can both have a strong U.S. Open showing. I'm not gonna pick them, but uh, no. Hopefully, they can make up for it there. <laughs> Rahm's not a bad pick. Rahm's not a bad. Remember, actually, before yeah, the actually. tournament, I said I said I'm going with uh, Matt Kutcher, but Rahm's gonna win it. You did say that. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And, I didn't uh, know COVID was going to jump in. <laughs> yeah, and we missed our picks on the tournament today, but uh, I don't think any of us were going to go with Garrick uh, Garrick Higgins. Okay, no, or, or Garrick Higo. I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing these guys' names. Right. Uh, the person I was watching today even said they're like, "Man, that's a really small gallery. What's uh, are there not a lot of people there?" And I was like, "No, no one knows these players. Right. <laughs> so, no one's following these guys around the golf course." Well, fellas, we have U.S. Open coming up, and uh, I'm super excited about it. You know, it's a major tournament. I know we all get jonesed and excited for the major tournaments when they come up. Uh, we have a few giveaways we're doing on our social media page, Golf Dudes. We're going to be coming at you guys with. And we also have a U.S. Open schedule um, that we're going to be kind of doing a few different podcasts, keeping you updated on a few specific things. Um, I know, you know, before we started this, I was always kind of looking for an outlet that, um, number one, could keep me updated on the comings and goings of the PGA tour without me. If I couldn't catch a tournament that weekend, I needed something I could kind of go to 
and check where tee times were. Where are my favorite players playing? Uh, who's favored to win? Give me some favorites. Give me some odds. And then, uh, you know, something that could kind of recap it as well afterwards. So we have a U.S. Open schedule coming up where we're going to do a pre-U.S. Open podcast coming out on uh, either Wednesday or first thing Thursday morning when the tournament starts. Uh, we're going to do one kind of mid-weekend, just kind of updating where the tournament's going and going into Sunday. And then we're going to do a post-U.S. Uh, Open. And these will be kind of abbreviated podcasts, not as long as the usual ones, but we're going to keep you updated the entire way through. We are all phenomenally excited. Uh, we're not going to make our picks tonight because we're going to make our picks on our first podcast coming out for the U.S. Open. So uh, come back, check us out for the U.S. Open stuff coming up this week. We're all just, like I said, we're stoked. I'm excited about it. How are y'all feeling? Well, y'all got any plans? Y'all watching it anywhere? What are you, what are you doing? I, no joke. I was supposed to go. Uh, my brother-in-law is a huge golfer, big, big, uh, you know, great golfer and big fan of the PGA and for it's his 40th birthday. And we, my, my family, uh, we all had planned, we got an Airbnb, we were going to go to the U S open for his 40th birthday. And then because of COVID, we had planned this for a couple of years when we realized that, Oh, Tory Pines is going to have the U S open. And then, uh, you know, we started thinking, they might not allow fans, so we don't want to ruin it. So now we're going to Palm Springs where it's like 115 degrees, but we're going to play some golf <laughs> and try nice. not to die. Uh, but uh, no, I'm, I'm definitely going to be watching it with uh, the family. We're going to play golf during the day and then you know, watch recaps or whatever, watch it after the, after the round. That's the best, man. When there's a great tournament on and you can go play around and then catch the closing end of it. Yeah, and watch the recaps. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's nothing yeah. better than that. Man. I'm jealous, wait, man. I will, I'll, I'm going to try to get out there one day this week, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get out every day. So it's going to yeah. be uh, not as fun for me. But I, we, uh, speaking about going, I think all three of us were actually had plans that none of us even knew about. Brandon called me. You know, I live out in California, so Torrey Pines is only about an hour and a half, two hours uh, south of me. And Brandon's dad, like we already talked about, is a huge golf guy and loves Torrey Pines and loves the majors. And so he went to Brandon and said, Brand, let's go. And so they had kind of gotten tickets. And we're looking into getting the the uh, the tickets for Tory Pines, and then uh, all of a sudden some calcium buildup oh, decided to just just dive right into Brandon's bladder and really just fuck that whole thing up. It was awesome. <laughs> Couldn't tell to take down Shaquille O'Neal, bro. <laughs> they did. Yeah, you're not going, right? Are y'all have y'all rekindled plans now that you're out? Or is so it- yeah, we're I think we're we're not actually not going to go anymore because oh, um, I got some dark appointments for the kidneys at the end of the week. Super lame. So no. Freaking sucks, but uh, Tory Pines is awesome. Jeff and I went a few years back. Yeah, and uh, super iconic spot. My dad, my dad and I actually went to the U.S. Open at. Uh, well, I guess it was in 2012, and that was a Daily City. And I'm drawing a blank on the tournament right now, so I might have to edit that out. But uh, <laughs> long story short, is That's yeah, I love the U.S. Open, and uh, I can't wait. And yeah, I, we, I got a decent yeah. pick, I think, coming up. We'll see. Can't wait to announce it on Wednesday. All right. You keep it keep it close to your chest, bro. Because if I'll steal it. If I hear I'll it, I'm stealing it, too. it bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do your research. I know your pick's probably gonna be better than mine. Oh, uh, real quick. I don't know if y'all heard this. Tiger Woods. The uh PGA offered him to commentate for the US Open. Mm-hmm. And I I was like, Oh, please, God. And then he turns it down. Yeah, okay. He's a very awkward man, first and foremost. If people don't know this on a personal level, he's very awkward. So I do not think that he would he would do well on a coverage like that. And I'm probably going to v- upset some viewers right now. But <laughs> uh, the guy cannot hold a conversation very well. Tiger, yeah. yeah. No, I've kind of I've heard that I've heard that too. Uh, I also think wasn't that did he say or did someone else say like he didn't want to do it because he didn't want to take the attention away from the U.S. Open. Like he didn't want the conversation to be about him uh, commentating versus, you know, the, the actual tournament happening, which I felt like if, if that's what he really did say, um, that's a little egotistical. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, don't, I think yeah. people are still going to watch the U S open for the U S open. hundred percent cool. saying that is kind of like, you know, I want people to, wa- I want people to watch the U S open. So I'm not going to commentate and bring in thousands and millions of more viewers. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. it's like, yeah, okay. yeah. And I honestly, I don't know if Tiger did say that or not, or if someone else was just saying that. Um, right. I think it would have been awesome. I was bummed to hear that he, that he turned it down. Um, but I get it too. I've definitely heard that he's a little, little awkward. Have you seen any of those videos, uh, that like TaylorMade puts out when they launch like new wedges or, yeah. or, or the Sim two or 
uh, and they they bring in all the top guys from Team TaylorMade, yeah. and they like show them the driver, show them the wedges, and they hit shots and stuff. Like Tiger's Tiger's so analytical when he's looking at the driver, or thinking about like what's this made out of, or where's the weighting, and how has this changed from last time versus like DJ, who's like, oh yeah, this looks great. Like I can't wait to hit this thing. I'll bomb it 400 yards. You know, like DJ's so in, in, uh, engaging and and like cool to listen to. Rory's cool to listen to, and Tiger's so like meh. Like, yeah, man, no, this totally. how's this? And you know, he has to be that way. Like you kind of have to be, if you're going to be that dominant for so long, like obviously it makes sense that you would have that type of mindset. In one of those uh, back and forth, one of the Taylor made specials, it was him and Jason day and Rory. And they were talking about how they hit a certain shot or how they see a certain shot. And tiger was using some like lingo, you know, he was like, you know, you got to get a little floaty and you got to, you got to get a little, uh, got to get a little deep in the steep in the stance. It, it like, you're just <laughs> do, saying these things. And finally Jason day paused and he goes, all right, now how would you say that to a human? <laughs> it was like no one knew what yeah. he was talking about. It's like he's just such a he's such a savant that I'm sure the way he sees the exactly. game, you know, it's just different. We're not going to get it. You know, he right. can say it to us. I'm not going to understand it, but I'll listen to it all day long. Absolutely, I'm not going to understand a thing, but I'll 100 percent listen to it. Yeah, totally. So, fellas, we got uh, the U.S. Open schedule that we're going to keep uh, for this week, and I'm super stoked about it. Like I said, we'll get our picks in coming on the first podcast. And then we'll be all on the ride together. Uh, listeners and podcasters alike will be diving into the U.S. Open and super stoked for it. Can't wait. Looking forward to it, man. Yeah, yeah buddy. So as always, real quick, want to throw our sponsors a little shout out again. SweetRollsGolf.com and KegSmiths.com. Go check those guys out at their websites. Uh, from Golf Dudes, my name is Jeff Lewis. We have Mark Bonus and Brandon Fletcher. Guys, we'll see you all at the U.S. Open. Cheers. Cheers, boys. Cheers.